Okay, so uh, welcome to uh, Peter Brooker. Um, so Peter and I are connected as uh, we are in most of these interviews uh, for our Biomechanics Coach Diploma Connection. So Peter, anybody watching this, if you can let them know um, a little bit about yourself and your profession. Okay, so uh, I'm ex-military, ex-army. Uh, I did the bulk of my time in the Royal Signals. Uh, left a few years ago. Qualified as a personal trainer, level three, but I also was drawn towards yoga and Pilates. So I ended up finding myself qualifying to do yoga and Pilates. And I'm now running my own studio, which is sort of like south of Cambridge in a small village of Meldrith, um, where I actually happen to live as well. So it's quite convenient, sort of like easy commute. Um, and I do yoga, Pilates, and I do the biomechanics to sort of like um, screen people before the Pilates and I use the I move freely stuff as an easy introduction to sort of like for those that have struggled with, with, with sort of like the Pilates or even going straight into doing a yoga session. So it's sort of like it's an easy sort of like in. Um, I use quite a lot with my one-to-one -one clients as well because they come in for, they're come, normally coming from rehabilitation from injuries. And during the lockdown period, I've made sort of like the I move freely, I call it I move freely Pilates. I've made that available to all of my members and some of the sort of like the, the clients who haven't been able to attend their regular sort of like physio or osteo appointments have been using the I move freely and they sort of like they've been claiming that sort of like it's, it's keeping them going um, until they can get to sort of like seeing their osteo. So I think that's sort of like it's quite a a good selling point in itself just for sort of like the iron food and the whole biomechanics stuff. And I think I see you as quite um in my head quite a a great representative for um men to take part in what may be perceived as a female dominated kind of area of movement um, styles, if you like, the yoga uh, and Pilates is often seen by guys as a bit, you know, well, oh, that's 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 for my wife or my girlfriend. Bit fluffy. Say again. Bit fluffy. Yeah, a bit fluffy. Whatever. I didn't want to say fluffy, but um, well, I used to have the same opinion, and as a sort of like a hard style, sort of like um, trainer, sort of like doing a lot of boot camp stuff, kettlebells, barbells, sort of like throwing heavy weights. With. You've got to look at it, it's this sort of like it's the yin to the yang. It's the opposite of that. You also have to remind a lot of the sort of like the lady sort of like instructors that Joseph Pilates was himself a martial artist and a gymnast. Um, he was also a boxer as well. And he would took like he died when he was in his 80s, and he was still smoking a cigar as well. So you know, sort of like and if you take yoga back to its origins in India. There were very few female yogis, it was all men. So, and still is to this day, in fact. So it's a very male orientated sort of like um, following uh, in, in there. So yeah, it's only in the last few years where we've allowed feminism, and I say allowed feminism, that sounds terrible, doesn't it? Feminism has sort of like uh, drawn ladies into those professions, into those sort of like areas of training. Um, um, with Joseph Pilates, he set, set up in New York uh, just before sort of like the, the Second World War. Um, and his studio, I'm sure it was going to be a sort of like martial arts boxing studio, but it was surrounded by dance studios. Right. So a lot of the dancers were going to him to sort of like rehabilitate from injuries. And he'd already got this sort of like the nucleus of sort of like the Pilates sort of like system as we call it today, already in place. So, and a lot of those dancers, they weren't just ladies, they were men as well. So, you know, it's, and that's, that's kind of where it's got the fluffiness though, because a lot of these lead instructors were ladies and they took it out and they continued sort of like with their background in dance to sort of like influence the sort of like the other dancers. Yeah, and I think, I think you're right because my initiation into the health and fitness world was 30 years ago into the fitness classes, which was your old school aerobics, which was heavily female orientated. There were some guys as well again back then, but I think over the, over the years, the evolution of exercise, the guys did bodybuilding, the girls did cardio, and we've started to recognize actually the guys need to move better and the girls need to have 
strength as well. So we've started to get this crossover. Um, but even your character of um, even as a yogi, Pilates, whatever you want to call it, a practitioner of the fluffy stuff, um, your personality and the way you deliver your um, ideas and thoughts are nowhere, anywhere near fluffy. Uh, they're still from um, a male perspective, uh, but still delivered with an, you know, where men and women, I think, would endear to your style. And I think that's, I think that's really good. I think it's good for the industry as, as a whole, uh, but I really enjoyed having you in the classroom. And I remember I was speaking to James Brakespear yesterday, actually, <laughs> about the weekend where I, it was me and the boys um, one weekend, and I think, I think you were probably almost all military, and it yeah. was very testosterone fueled. So I know there's another side to you and all those guys. I think we were sorting out a rank structure and we decided that James was bottom of the pile. So, so get the bruise on. That was it, I think. But it was great. And I think uh, what I loved about, you know, those sort of sessions and particularly with, with your group, that kind of banter is it's known and shown that learning is more likely to occur uh, and um, be cemented when we're in a different state. We're in a state of... Um, joy and a you know elevated state of um, enjoyment and fun and laughter. So um, I, I definitely think that there was a, there was a proactive sort of evolution of our education at that point, even though it may have seemed like it was absolute chaos. <laughs> so, um, but just oh, that, was good, that was a good set, I and mean, it's a good course, and it was like nice to meet those guys. And, and, and straight away, we sort of like we kind of all gelled. Um, even with Sam, who was RAF, dare I say, he sort of like we, we joined him, got him to join in with us, and then sort of like, yeah, you could see that sort of like some of the civilian members of the class were, uh, yeah, what's going on over there? Until you explain what the sort of like the, the score was. But yeah, it was, it was nice, and it was nice to chill. And I'm still in touch with both Dwayne and James. Not so much with Sam, I think he's got his own issues going on. I think so, yeah. Oh, but yeah. I, think, I think you're right. I think the learning uh, process is so much more um, fun when you, you have, because you do bond, you know, you, you're obviously coming back, um, uh, you know, three trips in, if you like, um, but over a, such a long period of time, and you're coming back, you're going through a difficult process of absorbing complex information and you're able to have fun, even, at, you know, happy to say, I, I don't know the answer or, you know, I think that can be helpful to others maybe watching this to recognise that while we were discussing a complex subject, uh, there is the ability to enjoy it and have fun. It isn't all kind of serious, you know, talking about levers and, uh, and so on and so forth. Yeah. Um, so thinking, just coming through, because uh, interestingly, we're, we're, we're 2nd of June, anybody watching this? Uh, so we're just sort of lockdown is just beginning to be loosened. How have you found it, um, A, being on lockdown, have you been able to work, have you found some kind of solution? And B, do you, how do you see the future of our industry coming out of lockdown, sort of medium and long term even? Do you think it's going to be the same or completely different? Um, I think there'll be a lot more online and I'm sort of like, I'm kind of gearing up to do 50-50. So I'll still have uh, a presence here in the studio um, and again, it depends upon how much social distancing we're allowed. Uh, normally, I can have, I've got space for six people and myself as an instructor. Um, I'd already sort of like kind of figured that, well, it, I can get four people in here and myself and still adhere to sort of like say social distancing. But if they drop it back down to a metre, then I can sort of like fill the class again and it can be sort of like a full sort of like capacity of six. Some of my clients are still sort of like, sort of like compromised, immune compromised, or sort of like um, in a demographic where it'd be better not to sort of like come into a, a, a new environment like this. So I, again, I'm gearing up to do sort of like 50% still online as well. Um, the online classes have worked. Um, I'm glad to say that sort of like when you've got one-to-one -one clients who are paying quite a lot of money to come attend sort of like personal in-house training, when they switch to online, you get really nervous when it comes to time for them to re-sign. And I'm glad to say that sort of like two of them have signed up again and they're quite happy with sort of like the way that the one-to-one -one online is going. 
Um, industry, it's difficult to say. I think it will be sort of like, it will become some kind of 50-50. And as things ease off, then people will realise that they do like to go into a gym environment or a studio environment. People like that, that interaction with other people. They sort of like, there's banter and they're sort of like, um, uh, friendships are made in this sort of like studio. Or it's even a place for friends to come and meet. You know, I'm sort of like, you know, um, friends come along here, you get two people come along to a sort of like small meeting like this or a group like this. And they sort of like, you know, that's part of it. That's what they want to do, train with their friends. I think it is the consensus, everybody that I'm speaking to is of the same mind, that commercially it's a no-brainer to put some of our work online. You know, we work very hard for very little money. We look long hours trying to serve, you know, our community in whatever way we are. So to have a portion online, we can serve more people for one and create different pricing brackets where if you can't afford the face-to-face -face, you can go online inevitably that introduces them to you and your ideas uh, or even for those who are a bit intimidated by gym environments which is where i think the online really sits nicely or even the people who if we have the skills and all the protection in place are less able to go to a facility or you know get in and out places uh, I agree totally and I think that is the running consensus. It's almost like we've been nudged forwards 10 years in time through the lockdown, uh, yeah. as the direction we were probably going to go in any way uh, to some degree. Um, so in terms of you, you've gone through the whole diploma and you've done all the face-to-face -face training, you have been working with people obviously as you've described, how do you think um, within your field um, that the Bomb Against Coach Diploma has helped you, because I know it's more, well, you talk more about the I move freely side of things. How has it helped you as a trainer, coach, exercise professional, do you think? Uh, it's given me a deeper understanding of the movements and the asanas of both Pilates and yoga. And also when it comes to helping people who have got movement problems, it's helped me massively. I mean, I sort of like, I understood the mechanics of, sort of like some of the stuff. But, but the sort of like the anti spasms of sort of like, of the sort of like, they're just so magical. They sort of like, the problem is getting people to do their homework. But the, but the, but the eye move freely, um, Pilates, as I say, I introduced that. I started having people coming along who've got movement problems. And I was trying to teach them sort of like the, the, the I could say hard style of Pilates, but I was trying to teach them the traditional sort of like movement within Pilates. And it was too much for them. Yeah. So then sort of like starting easing that back and you've got people who have got sort of like major back problems. I move freely, works with them. They can't afford one-to-one. -one. They can come along and do the class. They'll still get something out of it. It still moves within their sort of like um, movements are still within their abilities. Um, those people who are, I want to say weak, haven't got a weakness or too weak, too uncoordinated perhaps for the full Pilates sort of like, uh, repertoire or even yoga then get the eye move freely stuff and sort of like biomechanic stuff and get them to sort of like it's just start point yeah. but also then sort of like say oh I'm a bit injured or I've got this and say well try these movements these sort of like try these anti-spasms these are great they're sort of like you know and if it doesn't work then you better go and see your doctor yeah, yeah. yeah it is it's so simple and I think that's the, the challenge for us is that kind of convincing people as you say but I think that's where the online piece maybe helps because it's that reminder they can maybe go on to recordings of our sessions or just join in um, have you got an example without obviously giving any personal details of someone maybe in particular that you always remember or that you had a great result uh, that you'd be able to speak about yeah as a client that I'm working with at the moment one-to-one -one, uh, and he's been with me for quite a while so he, it started off he'd got lower back problems, he's a guy in his late 50s, early 60s, never really done any training throughout his life, um, has decided that sort of like the back issue has got to be sort of like he's got to do something about it now. Uh, he came to me uh, about 12 months ago now um, and I started him off and it was sort of like the same mistake that I made with a lot of them is I started him off with that traditional kind of Pilates, yeah this is the structure, this is what we do. We do some stretching there as well and soon realized that, that it wasn't working for him in fact it may have been making him a little bit worse right and then we sort of like we eased it off and it was just sort of like slight movement patterns 
Then I started doing a biomechanics course and then started adding that, feeding that into it, anti-spasm, let's do some of this gentle movement. One of the things I was really keen was to do the eye move freely so that I could then start working with, with actually with this guy. Um, and then it's sort of like, and now we've moved on uh, this month, last month, the guy's moving house, so he's got a new house where he's doing a lot of work uh, in the new house. And before he couldn't lift and do stuff, he would go out gardening and he'd come back on a Monday and say, oh, I'll be back in again, I was gardening. Well, now he's moving back to rubber around. Yes, he's been very careful and he's leaving the big heavy stuff to sort of like the guy who's working with him and helping him, but he says, I'm moving back to rubber now. And he's sort of like, and he's, he's in such a much better place. There's still a little bit of discomfort, but it's not the pain and it's not, it's sort of like, it doesn't have to take days out lying on the floor waiting for the pain to ease off. You know, he's, he's moving, he's working, he's doing stuff that, that he needs to do. And it's sort of like, you know, and that's just, that's just one of them. So, yeah. it, it, it hits the nail on the head, really, Peter, when, when you get those moments. And often when I ask people, it's never about, uh, they never talk about, oh, my client had the joy of growing big biceps or getting a six pack. It's always about, I can put my socks on, I can move around better, I can pick up rubble. That, and that, yeah. that's kind of what they're buying offers rather than a strong core or a six pack or, you know, um, great quads or whatever else. And I think it, that's always where we, we've got to be mindful as trainers and coaches that really that, that's the true nature of what people want, isn't it? Do you think, do you agree? Yes, very much so. Yeah, uh, sort of like um, one of the ladies who was doing the I'm in free Pilates um, online, well, she stopped coming now. She's, she's still doing the recordings, but she's not stopped coming to the sort of like the Zoom meeting yeah. because she's gone back to playing golf. Right. And that was, that was her sport. And this is another lady who's in her late 50s, early 60s. So, and she's sort of like, she's happy that she's sort of like, she had a shoulder uh, problem, which she'd been seeing an osteopath for. Um, can't see the osteopath, she'd been doing the on the free stuff with me um, and the client stuff. And as I say, she's gone back to golf, the sun's shining, they're allowed back on the greens, so she's happy, you know? So, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. And, and that, that's it, we're not supposed to keep them as clients forever. The real success is when they're gone and they're off and they're doing that thing they came for, isn't it? Yeah. So um, you've come through, obviously, from your military background um, and, you, you know, you've got, your, uh, you've got your funding through LCAS, I believe, to be able yeah. to access this training. Um, what would you say? So if somebody, one of the military guys have got some funding and they were looking at this training, what would you say if they were considering doing it um, in terms of your experience? Was there something particularly you enjoyed? Um, obviously, you've spoken about some of the results. Well, with the enhanced learning credits, um, you get if you if you've got long enough in, in time in service, you get three bites of the cherries. So, my first course was yoga. Second course, I did strength and conditioning course, and then the third one, which was sort of like level four, which elevates me up to that sort of like that level was the biomechanics. And that kind of put all the other sort of like bits and pieces into place. Yeah. So, so yeah. Um, and it's easy to do. All you need to do is sort of like just follow it on, online and just sort of like, yeah, I'm having problems sort of like signing up for it. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you for that. So um, are you, do you read a lot of books? Do you have a book recommendation for anybody um, I know as I speak to everybody because I'm a book nerd, well, I'm an audible nerd, I've got to say, but um, and I'm getting this collection of books that I've started writing down. Is there any that you would recommend? Uh, uh, anything, novel? Oh, no, no, novels. Any, anything at all, literally. I'm a big David Gemmell fan, but he's science, science fantasy adventure stuff. Oh, right. So I've got all of his books, but that's, that's just good, right? that's complete escapism. But from a yoga perspective, um, my go-to book, or one of my go-to books, is James Hewitt's Yoga Bible. Um, it's a big old tune, and I've had it for ages, 
and it was sort of like back in the day um, when I started doing yoga, it was James Hewitt's sort of like small companion book to that, which sort of like gave me the sort of like the, the inside information as it were. I then went and bought his Bible and, and it's got sort of like everything you need to know. It's probably a little bit dated now, but as I sort of like say, it covers all the aspects of yoga. It's got all the asanas, like standing postures, lying postures, sitting postures. It goes into sort of like the meditation side of it and sort of like, and the more spiritual side of it, if you want to go into that as well. And do you yeah. practice that side? I know we've spoken about the breathing aspect of uh, using breath and meditation. Do you practice that on a daily basis and do you coach that as well? Um, again, it's not for everyone. So uh, I don't really push it that hard. I use it for my own personal benefit. Uh, I have my own issues that I need to work out. Once I've worked those issues out and I'm happy with sort of like the, the method will work, then then yes, probably I will teach it. But breath work, there's a lot in sort of like now coming through with the Wim Hof sort of like breathing, breathology of was it Piers Pedersen or something. But they also like they, their foundations are all pranic and from yoga. Um, a lot of meditation and sort of like and mindfulness and contemplation. Again, it's all there in yoga. So it's my personal practice. I don't push it on the clients. We do sort of like um, as part of the relaxation, beginning and the end of the sort of like the, the session, we'll, we'll touch on it and we'll do some breathing and we'll do some sort of like relaxation, which is a kind of meditation as well. So, so yeah, as I say, it, I find it's very personal at the moment and I'm sort of like, and I think, I think you, you hit the nail on the head there. And again, it's down to kind of stigmas, I think, um, because I think you would be a really good uh, communicator of meditative techniques and breaths, conversations we've had and me knowing a bit about you. And I think coming out of this lockdown, there's this, all this speak around mental health uh, being an issue. Um, and some people might not want to admit that or go down that route. And yet they would benefit from meditation and interestingly uh my partner is um a hypnotherapist and i've had my first experience of being hypnotized and it, if i'm honest it's not dissimilar to it's different but it's not dissimilar to meditation right. but i wonder if the market that you're talking about who maybe feel meditation isn't right would buy into the hypnotherapy vocabulary better or if you just didn't call it meditation and you called it, I don't know, boy's breath. <laughs> I don't know. Do you know what I mean? I do think that language changes people's perception of what it is because it's all, it's all the same. Mindfulness, meditation, hypnotherapy, psychotherapy, they are all about your mental state to some yeah. degree. They have different ways of communicating it. Um, and I, I understand that. But actually... I think there would be a demand and I think you would go down a storm for the demographic that you're talking about if there was a, a means of, I want, I want to say convincing them, I don't mean in a coercive manner, but just in communicating, this is what it is, right? Don't think of it as meditation, think of it as not necessarily hypnotherapy either, but you know, um, I don't know. Branding, so it's, it's again, it's that sort of like, it's that coming up with sort of like, you change something that's brand new, isn't it? And sort of like it's, it's coming up with that, it's trying to find that, that sort of like that, that unique selling point. Oh, yeah, yeah I, just think, I just think that, that, that it's there, and I think you would be a really good, uh, you know, kind of mentor to people maybe that are from that area. If, if you come up with a name, Brook of Breath, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that doesn't sound good, does it? No, it doesn't. <laughs> so, uh, okay, so anybody watching this who might be intrigued by your services, um, if you could, do you mind just sharing how do people find you? Where are you? Websites, um, you know, how can they get a hold of you? So my website is Powerhouse Pilates Studio. Um, it's so, and it's got all the information there that you need. We sort of like to say, I do yoga, I do Pilates. And I do the biomechanics and it's all there. Um, I might rebrand at some stage, but for the moment, Powerhouse Pilates Studio is working for me. And 
there's loads of powerhouses. Because because Joseph Pilates referred to his sort of like the diaphragm and the sort of like the, the core musculature that we call it as the powerhouse, yeah. which is why that sort of like that sort of like strong and and it's a Pilates. He never called it Pilates. It got called after him by his followers. He called it controlology. That's right. I got and, the book. I haven't read it yet, but I've got the book. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah. and it's a studio, because it's a studio, it's small, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, any, I, I would strongly recommend anybody checking uh, out your website and having a look for you. Um, and I'm really looking forward to reading your case to this. <laughs> yeah, okay, so am I. <laughs> but again, you know, on the way out, lockdown has put kind of this freeze on the world. We're in this bubble right now, which actually I don't mind too much. Uh, as much as I do want to get back to face to face. So um, yeah. I'm, I'm really appreciative of your time, Peter. Um, I'm going to let you get on and look forward very much to uh, seeing you again at some point on the other side of lockdown. Uh, but thanks so much yeah. for your time. Brilliant. You're welcome. Thank you, Rachel. As I say, it's a brilliant course, so, and I've got so much out of it. And, I'm sort of like, and it's one of those things that you can apply in sort of like any kind of field, hard style, soft style, whatever. It's sort of like it's got applications. Okay. Thank Brilliant. you. Take care. Namaste. 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 Namaste.